On April 16, 2007, Sung Wee Cho committed the largest instance of mass murder in United States history by taking the lives of 32 students and wounding 25 others before finally turning the firearm on himself as the police were closing in. In the aftermath, aftermath of the Virginia Tech shootings, Tim Kaine, the governor of Virginia, convened panels consisting of various officials and experts to investigate and examine the response and handling issues related to Virginia Tech shootings. One such forum, I can't comment on whether this is a forum instituted by Governor Kane, met at Northern Virginia Community College Annandale campus on October 9th. VAGunInfo.com was there and this is the video that we took. We will get to that shortly. The panel and forum was also attended by several members of the Virginia Citizens Defense League and by many like-minded community citizens. On a positive note, I think that the forum was a good idea. I think it's important to get community involvement and to solicit ideas and to try to look at uh, all aspects of a case like this subjectively. Um, everyone that was there from the administration side of the school seemed to be genuinely interested in what was being said. They paid attention and um, I do appreciate them for holding this forum. And now for some criticism. The panel did not seem to be curious enough to ask any questions of the citizens who showed up to speak. The panel maybe asked one or two questions. Uh, they weren't in depth and they didn't seem to be intellectually curious about the concerns of the community. The community that will be using those schools for their continuing education. They also, uh, this is a criticism of the moderator, he didn't want to hear any further discussion about concealed carry of fi firearms, handguns on campus. He said that the issue had been discussed extensively. Uh, my only guess is that he was speaking about the previous session that was held in Southwest Virginia. And I think it was uh, wrong of him to ask people who took time out of their lives and drove to Annandale with the intent to speak about that issue. He, he basically wanted them to be quiet and I don't think that was appropriate. And lastly, it seemed that um, the forum panel and the moderator were very glazed about any idea of allowing permit holders, adults who are responsible and have the training and the background checks, to carry their concealed firearms on college campuses for their own safety. That was very disappointing. I hope that my impression was wrong and I hope that they do the right thing. Um, in closing, uh, I do want to again thank the panel for coming to Annandale, to, for even having the forum in the first place, and for listening respectfully to what the citizens had to say. Without further ado, here is the video from the Virginia College Community College Systems uh, Forum on School Safety held at Northern Virginia Community College on October 9th, 2007. Good evening, everyone. This evening we have with us members of the panel Starting to my to your immediate left is Chief Coletta. Chief Jim Coletta is the uh, Chief of Police here at Northern Virginia Community College. Next, we have Dr. Sam Hill. Uh, Dr. Hill is the Provost of Woodbridge uh, College. Next, we have Ms. Catherine Spender, who is the CIO of Thomas Nelson Community College. And we have Mac McGinty. Mac McGinty is the Executive Director of the Community College Workforce Alliance in Richmond. And finally, we have Marsha Webb. Marsha Webb is a member of the Information Technology staff at the System Office in Richmond. Uh, a couple of points by way of introduction to let you know what the task force has been up to. 
Uh, thus far, we've been charged to review the Virginia Tech panel findings, governor's panel. We've done so to prioritize those who will be coming out with the report on those, as well as the public information hearings on the issues we gathered here in January for the Board of Visitors. We've also taken the opportunity to look at the president panel, uh, the Virginia Tech's panel, total 120 recommendations from that one alone, as well as best practice literature throughout the United States and Virginia. So, so far, so good. We're excited to uh, bring this to a close, to bring the initial findings to our presidents in October and December for their review and input, and finally to the board in January. This evening, we're going to give everyone who wants to comment from now and 8.30 an opportunity to do so. And to make sure that everyone has an opportunity, we're going to limit those comments to three minutes and ask that we not duplicate one more to make sure that we get all the issues to the table that we can. Uh, we're here to listen, uh, certainly not to debate. We're very excited to hear from you this evening. And with that, I'd like to open it up and uh, invite you to raise your hand and we'll have someone bring a mic to you and give you the floor. So welcome again and look forward to hearing you. Don't be shy. Who would like to go first? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Lisa Kwanza. I live in Stafford. I am an NBCC alumni. Um, graduated in 1996, went on to get my bachelor's at the University, at the University of Phoenix. The one thing that I noticed from the Virginia Tech report is that they did not consider any other students than the 18 to 22 year olds. Here in Northern Virginia, if you look at the demographics of our students, they're not just 18 to 20 here at NBCC. You know, St uh, Strayer University says that their average age student is in their 30s. We have one of the most highly educated workforces in this area because of the Department of Defense and the federal government. We're adults. We are going back to school. But also, I have a concealed weapons permit. I have had since the very beginning. But yet, I cannot bring my weapon onto this school to take a class. I have to upgrade my certifications. So I do too, still take classes here. I live in Stafford. I work in Falls Church. I'm not even supposed to have it in the parking. So if I want to take a class here or at the Alexandria campus, I would have to go all the way home to come back to take a class. You know, I've been hearing in the papers, you know, all this talk about, you know, kids and guns and drugs. Okay? We're not kids. Don't forget that there are others here that are taking classes. I'm in my 40s. My son's going to be starting his. He's just turned 30. It's not just the 18 to 21 year olds. There are the rest of us, too. And I think you need to consider that. I'm just asking that you do not forget about the rest of your student population who are not young adults. My name is Christopher Wu. Um, I'm a member of my uh, local uh, city's volunteer fire department, and um, I have to get recertified because I just moved from New Jersey. So I will be coming here later on this year or at the beginning of next spring in order to take EMT classes. I'm 27. Basically, most of what she said holds true for me. I'm allowed to bring a gun on this campus. Mr. Wu, let me stop you. I mentioned. We've heard that point. I appreciate it. Okay, no, that's fine. You no, I want to continue on for that. So the weapon tissue? No, no, no. It's no, not. I'm not to touch down. I just want to make sure we give everybody an opportunity. No, I'm not talking about the concealed weapon issue. I'm talking about the open carry issue. I can open carry a firearm, which I am as right a now. Fire legally. Person, yeah. I'm sorry. What's that? As a fire person, or a fire, uh, no, fire no, person. no, no. As a citizen of Virginia, and uh, I do so on my daily business, or I conceal carry. You know, depending on the uh, where I am and where I'm going. In order to accommodate the school's policies, I have to choose to disarm myself 
as soon as I step on here as a student for fear of being able, um, being kicked out or losing my credits or different things like that. So that's pretty much what I had to say. Let me uh, give it, I apologize to our first speaker. I'm going to skip one part of our protocol. Mr. Wall, I'll start with you. Does the panel have any questions of Mr. Wu? Uh, so there are two issues. One is concealed carry issue. The other is open carry issue. Right. <laughs> questions of our first comment? Oh, that's no problem. I'm I'm 27, so I'm way past the uh, the age of kids and alcohol and being you know not responsible. I have I went to community college back in my home state of New Jersey, followed my bachelor's and now my master's, and I'm coming back for continuing education. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Other comments for the past week. Yes, sir. I, am, I apologize, I came in a little bit late, so I missed any of the opening remarks. You started at 7? Yes, sir. All right, um, my apologies. So if I'm repeating, uh, I'm forgetting. Um, I'm an adjunct professor here, and uh, you know, there's been some concerns as far as uh, uh, protocols go in terms of what students do, what instructors do, what professors do in terms of evacuation procedures. Um, post Virginia Tech, I put in my classes to uh, uh, any first responders, EMS, military veterans, active duty, uh, military active duty, police, um, security personnel, identify yourself to me uh, for a, a additional assistance in the class. Um, so that is one uh, item to utilize the resources that we have on community campuses. Uh, it's the full extent. Um, I sent an extensive uh, uh, emails internal to our, our president here in terms of trying to uh, ensure that there's adequate tra uh, training for uh, all personnel who, who want to go through it in terms of EMS, uh, first responders, uh, first aid, CPR, which I was able to uh, take advantage of last year and I've used a couple of times already as first responders and make that available to staff as well as students. Um, and third, um, a recommendation that uh, individuals would have access to some self-defense brought by their uh, personnel on campus, by uh, security personnel. Uh, we should have a, a little bit more forceful response, I think, in terms of uh, just waiting lock, lockdown and waiting for security uh, forces to come in. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm a prior military veteran. Um, so I have maybe a little bit more than, than most, but um, an adequate response for students as well as faculty members is uh, just not to wait for the security people to be there. And, and that should be addressed as well. And I guess finally, I'll catch all here, uh, the last one is um, next year <coughs> there will probably be significant inputs of uh, Iraqis who will be coming into Virginia Community Colleges. Uh, ways of Iraqis. The, uh, the community, the state, needs to look at what security procedures for screening. We had the medical issue with Virginia Tech. What will we do as we have new influx of immigrant students trying to check their background? And that's going to be a, a, a major issue that I don't see any national or state uh, leadership addressing. So. Um, throw that at you and, and take it for what it's worth. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Questions? I failed to mention at the beginning, let me get back on my spiel. I'm just noticing all these cards up there. These cards are uh, folks that are here that maybe they can comment later or don't want to comment publicly. There's a comment section in the back that you can drop in the box on the way out or you can email my voice at least. I apologize for forgetting my commercial. Who would like to comment on that? Sir? Hi, my name is uh, Dexter Goptel. I am a returning student. My first trip through here was in the early 1980s, at which time I was a returning veteran. So I was already eligible to have a permit uh, if Virginia had been uh, shall issue at the time. 
I am, of course, rather pointedly not carrying a gun at the moment because um, I am a student at the moment. Now, if I wanted to uh, emulate Mr. Wu, all I would have to do is cut up my Nova card, peel off my parking sticker, and in December when registration comes around, refrain from firing up my Amex card to register again. And I, too, could, again, carry on campus. Um, I find it somewhat ludicrous that I can carry at UVA, I can carry at Tech, I can carry at VCU, but that's because I'm not a student there, nor my faculty there. Um, I'm going to take shameless advantage of this um, to promote the uh, kickoff of the NOVA chapter of Students for Concealed Carry on Campus. That's uh, concealedcampus.org. Get a card from me afterward. Okay, I'll let it go. Okay, concealedcampus.org. And um, as I said, I'm, I'm a veteran. I'm in my 50s, so I'm long past. As a matter of fact, my last beer was about 19 years ago. Um, the only things I use anymore is caffeine and theobromine, chocolate for the chemically illiterate. <laughs> and um, the, uh, the other point that I'd like to make is I'm a member of the Fairfax County CERT team, Community Emergency Response Team. That is a set of free training available to all um, Fairfax County residents and several other counties around the state um, for when something like Isabel comes through or we get our own dose of Katrina and you call 911. Say again? What was that team again? CERT, Community Emergency Response Team. And um, if, you, if you hit uh, citizencore.gov, there's an explanation. And that's for when you call 911 because a hurricane came through and either it doesn't answer because the 911 center has been smashed, or they say, we're kind of busy, can we get back to you in three days? So it's, you know, save yourself, save your family, and uh, do what you can for your neighbors. I'm all, I carry a first aid kit, CPR mask and gloves. Um, I have current first aid and CPR cards up to and including administering oxygen. And that's what I consider minimal protection and minimal preparation for life. And I'd really, really, really like to be able to take care of myself in the event something worse happens. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Questions? in the comments about training and uh, I think that uh, none of us can have too much training in terms of how to respond to emergencies. Uh, I believe that the, uh, that the uh, governor's uh, or executive order requires agency leaders to get training in uh, emergency response. And I'm wondering if the task force might consider uh, some forms of uh, ECCS-wide uh, executive training for top administrators at the colleges so that we could afford to bring in the very best in uh, executive uh, uh, emergency response training uh, and make sure that we have a very high level of, uh, of exposure to uh, responses at the very top. Questions? I'll comment that uh, our cycle of the panel's report doesn't time exactly the state budget process. One of the areas that we've identified early in our work is the need for that kind of training as well as other kinds of training throughout the college system. Good comment, thank you. Yes, ma'am. I only wanted to ask, why only limit the training to the higher level? If you're going to have the training made it available to faculty, staff, anybody that might be in that situation of needing to be a first responder or to protect, not just the administrators. 
I know you're going to have a cost, but I think everybody in that type of position that is responsible for other people's lives should have the training or the opportunity to have that training. I agree. Thank you. I always give you the opportunity to tell what's different. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, sir, and uh, ladies and gentlemen of the panel. My name is Ian Branson. Um, I want to thank you all for holding this today and listening to the comments from the public here with an open mind. <clears throat> I took a class at uh, Nova in the past. This gentleman here was my teacher. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. <laughs> but, um, I have a concealed carry permit and I'm ashamed to say I broke the rule here. I carried in my book bag every day for my own safety, for the safety of others. If I had to leave and go to the restroom, the book bag went with me. It was never out of my control. And I think that the people who are old enough, mature enough, responsible enough to take their own safety and the safety of their fellow Americans and their classmates seriously should not be ignored. Thank you. Questions? Thank you, sir. Uh, your teacher would like to speak. I think he's grateful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. well, I, I've been in that tech chair for 10 years, so my apologies if I can't remember you. Hopefully you enjoyed the class. <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right, let the president know he's next to you. Um, also, um, I, I was able to attend partially uh, two years ago. Um, I think it was the EHS, Department of Homeland Security funding um, for security personnel on campus for an identification of weapons of mass destruction course. Where, so there's outside money for some funding for security purposes if it's just not on the VCCS budget cycle. And if we're going to get elaborate, or this is a brainstorming you know, public input, then we're going to have to marry the Virginia Tech incidents with potential incidents in the future. I did mention the, the issue of immigrant students coming in and probably more, not less, in the near future. And the screening for medical background, psychological background, are all components that are necessary for that. Um, and again, there may be other outside funding for such, such services from DHS uh, for first responders. Um, and, and campus-wide um, as well. And um, I guess the last point I would make um, would be in terms of uh, an instructor's position. Again, there are some lockdown procedures as far as uh, Virginia Tech came out with, and I think internally uh, Dr. Thompson is going to be looking at that uh, as far as what we can lock, what we can, uh, what we, what we have access to uh, on campus. But um, if we're going to be elaborate. We, we should start not only leaving it at domestic, but there's some international aspects, and that may help funding as well. Um, so those items should be joined and, and uh, look at a, a very big picture and a very comprehensive picture for it. To have gotten our teacher, and we do have CPR training because I took it, and it's free for faculty and staff to take. I would like to see some other, I'd like to see it more encouraged and I would like to see it, um, maybe some other training also, but we do have uh, the advantage of doing that. My main concern is contact on campus. At night, especially, when it's mainly adjuncts here, um, we need to have a better system, I think, of um, people knowing how to get in touch with the police. I think the police number should be posted more places and all like that, but I think for adjuncts it's hard. They don't have an office necessary they can go in and now it's a little easier with cell phones. I forgot to say phones. it, I forgot. Um, that's kind of difficult. No, no, the campus police are here at night as well as they are in the daytime, but I just think when it's dark, it's more of opportunity for things to happen and I think there it's less administration, less full-time faculty and I know when I was a um, adjunct here, you know, you kind of, I mean we do have um, night people and so forth but it's just not as much presence on 
campus, I think we need more training and more contacts for the adjuncts. If I might ask, what, what's the typical response time? This is a question for the, the chief of police for the campus. What's the typical response time? Uh, if I might ask, what, what is the typical response time if a student encounters a problem here and uses the blue light box out front? That goes, uh, blue light box provided to our emergency phone system, and it, and it should be within minutes. Okay. Yeah. 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 One second. One seconds count. The police are minutes away. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, I have a good question. I've taken classes at the Alexandria, the Annandale, and the Woodbridge campus. The only ones I haven't taken is Loudon and Manassas. Um, I've noticed in the Woodbridge parking lot that usually the uh, security patrol will sit up at the front of the parking lot, but that doesn't help you when you're parked over on the right-hand downside, and you know, you're out there, you're coming back from a class that didn't let out till 10 o'clock at night, and you know, of course, you know security is there, but there's not a real big presence. And I don't like walking across the parking lot like that. You know, I got my arms loaded with, you know, whatever books it was that I was taking the class, Maybe computer printouts, I don't know. But I, and I don't know what the solution is, but I just don't feel safe. When I was coming here to Annandale in my 20s, this campus was so full I'd have to park that way out. I mean, there was a tennis court out there that, you, that, that used to be there. That to tell you when I was here. In the case of the workers' camps, is it more an issue of lighting or a security Both. 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 Um, I, you know, I don't know what the, 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 the solution is. Obviously, you can't have somebody escorting the women or the men out to their cars if they're parked out there, because if, if you come in, you know, classes are full, parking lots are full. You gotta park where you can. Now, I'm now handicapped, so I don't have that issue anymore. But I remember what it was like in my 20s and 30s, and I was not comfortable doing it. I like I'm more this Yes, sir. I really don't think I need this here, but uh, my name is uh, Sergeant Carlock. I just happen to be the supervisor for Woodbridge Campus. Uh, I guess when you went to school, uh, when you were a little bit younger, I wasn't there. I just took a class this spring. Well, I'm, I'm talking in terms of it being a little younger, but I've only been at the campus for 38 months, okay? 21 year veteran police officer. The campus police, uh, not so much at Woodbridge, but as a whole, in the whole department. We're in a uh, better way of putting it. We're learning like the, like the public is. We got caught up in this Virginia Tech issue, just like everybody else did, okay? No disrespect to anybody in here who can't conceal. I respect that. I got two comments there. The first comment is, anytime you need an escort, you just come down to room 102, there's an emergency phone on the wall, an officer will go ahead and assist you out to your car. I apologize that my officer didn't do that when you needed that. That shouldn't happen again. My office is 247. If you got a problem with one of my officers, if you're not getting adequate security, come see me. We'll take care of it. The second comment is uh, can't conceal. There's a lot of issues with that. I'm in an environment now that, you know, I'm served to protect the students of this college. I'll just give you guys a scenario for a second. We get an active shooter in this building or on this campus or any one of our campuses. The police officer is going to respond. The, the worst case scenario is he can't identify who's the bad guy and who's the good guy. He got two guns out in the hall or two guns in the classroom. 
He's trained to shoot, shoot, shoot to kill. If he just happens to shoot the bag, the student that, that, that got the concealed weapon permit is helping the officer out. You know the legal ramifications to this. So I would ask VCCS to stand firm on their policy. Because I'm a police officer and it's a violent. My job is to protect you guys. Now, on the other side of the coin, once I get on the scene, you say, hey, I got a concealed weapon permit. I got a weapon on me. We got a bad guy situation. I'm going to deputize you. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be judged tomorrow. I'd rather save lives today. But if I come on the scene, you're already down the hall shooting at the bad guy. I don't know who's the bad guy. So you got to look at it. Nobody wants to infringe on your rights. We're not, we're, not, we're not here to do none of that. We just want to make some common sense uh, positions here. Nobody wants to get hurt. Understand this, though. We are here to serve you. We, we welcome your input. I happen to be the training officer for the campus police also. So I wear a couple hats here. You guys are the students. You guys got input. Hey, Woodbridge is in a transition mode for better. I welcome everybody's comment. But just when you think about the carrying concealed, you think about the VT incident, man, Nobody wants that here in, our, in, in Northern Virginia. Nobody wants it anywhere in the country, in that matter. But it already occurred. We got to deal with it now. In Woodbridge, because this happened, a student a couple weeks ago, a student came to class with his firearm, came to the building. He immediately came to the campus police and turned his weapon in. He was already late for class, so my, one of my officers called me. So I went down to the officers to meet with the student. I told the student, I'll take the weapon in my possession. You go to class, I unloaded it, locked it up for him. He came back a couple hours later. I gave it back to him, unloaded, told him that he can't bring it back to college, he can't bring it back to the campus. I respect, he respected the policy. Now, that scenario could have went a whole different way too. You know, because I still have rules and, and policies and procedures that I got to follow. But you guys got to just understand that. Just nobody, again, nobody is saying, you know, you can't have a gun. Nobody, nobody's even dealing with that issue. The issue is, though, when the police responds, he got to make a split-second decision. Who's good, who's bad? And God forbid if he takes a, take the shot out with the good student. Because we gotta deal with civil suits, we gotta deal with these these legal issues, and nobody wants to deal with that. So out of respect, I say, hey, you guys, uh, can these kill concealed weapon permits and carry guns is open? I ain't got a problem with that. But I also, the only problem I gotta have in, in this particular arena is that you guys gotta understand our point of view. Yes. I'm close. I'm close. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Save me the batteries. <laughs> Can we? Uh, let me remind everybody that we, we are here in host of Northern Virginia. We're grateful for Dr. Temple and Northern Virginia, wonderful folks for hosting us. But we are looking at campus safety issues statewide. So I realize there are issues that I'm certainly very familiar from my email box overflowing in terms of the issues of pro concealed gun. Concealed gun. And we understand that's an issue. That's one to sort of will wrestle with, and other panels have wrestled with. Let me, let me open the door and ask if we can focus on the campus safety aspects that you might have uh, to improve our, our campuses in terms of emergency preparedness across the entire Commonwealth. We really open, appreciate your, your comments and thoughts. Uh, my name is Bruce Jackson. Uh, I'm a member of ACL. I'm alumni of mostly the Woodbridge campus. I've got something like, I think, five two-year degrees now. I live real close to the school and I really enjoyed the class. But thank you very much. Um, 
just give you a minor amount of history. I hated school with a passion until I came to Nova. My GPA in high school for one, of, one semester, my senior year in high school, was 0.98. That's how bad I did in school. Right? I pretty much, I kept getting letters at Nova, you know, come to this party for people that are doing really good. And I thought they were making fun of me because it was for the other people, it wasn't for me. I always threw the letters away. I didn't realize that I was doing that good because I never paid any attention to the report cards. But thank you, I received a very good education at Nova. Um, I would like to say to the sergeant, and I didn't catch his name, uh, Carl, Carl. the bad guy's the one on the floor. If I'm in the class, the bad guy's the one on the floor, uh, simply put. Some statistics. Well, first off, statewide. Uh, I believe Blue Ridge Community College allows students to carry their firearms and doesn't have any problems. I'm going to cut you off. I'm not anti the issue, but I'm okay. this issue, and I appreciate it. But we really do want to get to other campus safety issues. It's truly not a circumstance where the Morse folks that's putting on one side or the other <laughs> tilts the balance. Okay. Well, let me, let me make a couple of points and then, I'll, then I will turn it over. Thanks. One of the, in the first 10 years that we had concealed carry in Virginia, we had 135,000 people that got their concealed carry permits and not one has committed a felony with their firearm in that 10 year period. If you take 100,000 citizens in the Commonwealth, about six are going to commit their first felony in any given year. Zero concealed carry permit holders committed a felony in the first 10 years from 95 to 2005. There is a profession that falls between those two, two statistics. That would be law enforcement. The average concealed carry permit holder is more, more law-abiding than the average policeman. Right? There is no problem with concealed carry. The blood in the streets things, they just don't happen. Carrying a college, carrying a college, Parking lot is no different than any other parking lot. Carrying it at a college cafeteria is no different than carrying it at a restaurant. Carrying it at a library is just like I go to my local library and there's never any issues. So I would beg to uh, differ with the officer about concealed carry issues. Thank if you. I reflect my notes that you're pro concealed carry, would that be accurate? Um, <laughs> actually, I would say I'm pro open carry. Concealed carry is just one of the ways that, that I do carry. Um, I'm an instructor for both the NRA and I do Utah as well. Sir, do you have a, a source you mentioned from 95 to 2005 that zero dollars has been committed in Virginia by concealed carry and permanent holders? I will have to find that reference and get back to you. All right? That would be wonderful to put in. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Good to see you next, Mr. Lewis. <laughs> I wanted to ask the panel, are they thinking about implementing um, any type of uh, wireless email text messaging for the students by campus, by Northern, system? I believe Northern is just going live. Northern has. Northern Virginia has? Northern Virginia has. Northern Virginia has. And on campus statewide, we are looking at helping the vendor conference for that later this year. So we are looking at notification systems successes and failures. It's not all of them have been successful. But the answer is Northern is participating with all the local law enforcement communities and risk preparedness. That actually before the Virginia Tech tragedy, Northern was already quite a ways down that path and it actually is actually been actually that last week month. Uh, a little bit a little bit earlier than that. A couple, a couple of weeks ago. So the answer is yes and yes and yes. But in some areas of the state very spotty coverage for sale and text and other things, so it's truly not a one size fits all or a cookie cutter approach fits all. We are looking at various approaches. What about the emergency lighting system? We have a, that's listed on some campuses as a priority and other campuses as a I mean, every campus building and every classroom has got an emergency lighting system. Why can't that be activated? Has that been thought about? On those campuses that you might, like in Southern Virginia or, you know, Southwest Virginia, where you might not have the cellular coverage and can do that, why can't you use the building's fire alarm system or the emergency lighting system to strobe or something like that? Some of the things you mentioned 
about the fire alarm system. We have vendors in looking at that. What would it take to ex extend that so that you could use some of the lighting and everything for uh, being able to notify people of an emergency? Also, the LCD panels that you can put at different locations within the colleges. So I think we're all looking at not just one mode, but various modes and how it would be most effective in our particular colleges. I can comment too that uh, we've done a survey of all 40 of our campuses, 23 colleges on 40 campuses. And we do know what's currently employed on each campus today and various technologies of that type. And we also know what the plans are and what's to be investigated in the next 12 month cycle, ending July of 08. Uh, we've also identified the top seven vendors nationally, the most popular use at 4,000 education institutions across the nation for emergency notifications. So we are going to look at those areas and are in the process of working through those areas. When we published our report in late January, one of the appendices to the report will be the campus notification of the status of each campus. Thank you. Mr. Wu, I think was next. I'm sorry. Uh, you can go first. See at the mic. Okay, this might be an inside baseball type of question, but from instructors' perspectives on confidentiality of students' papers, um, is anyone addressing that issue? Because again, depending on the discipline an instructor might be looking at, one might have some um, issues with some of the students and some of the materials we look at. I'm a political scientist. Um, we have some freewheeling discussions in my class. I probably have the honor or dishonor, whichever, of having the Secret Service contact me about uh, comments made in my class at one point in time um, concerning uh, what we think about the current commander in chief. Um, I try not to advocate uh, any use of violence, but rather free form uh, communication and, and actually providing the service of any a little bit. Um, so after that was taken care of, but the issue of looking at certain um, um, papers from students. And I think that the, the fallback mode, somewhat like the Virginia Tech incident, was you take it up your internal chain of command, see your department head, et cetera, if you have incidents. Um, but campus-wide, uh, is there something that I think that should be looked at and that should be advertised as to what um, instructors, if we have concern, as to the uh, either mental stability or uh, uh, violent tendency, uh, perhaps, of, of students. Um, we need to have some uh, maybe clearer instruction as to what to do if there is a concern based on students' writings um, and, and how to deal with that. And I think that needs to be looked at from the instructor-student relationship. Thanks. Um, I was, I'm sure some of the panel are aware the last school shooting that happened in Virginia before Virginia Tech was the shooting at Appalachian Law School, which uh, was stopped by two students, one of which was a sworn law enforcement officer, I think. Um, if I remember correctly, he was deputy from North or South Carolina. But do there exist any, I don't know, um, exceptions for law enforcement officers, whether or not they are um, sworn in the state of Virginia as students in Virginia? I don't know if there are exceptions for students uh, outside of the state of Virginia. I know several of our campuses have uh, sworn in the Commonwealth, is what the policy says. Training facilities for officers and other things of that nature to make exceptions to various, various mm -hmm. kind of situations. But I don't know the answer to that question. Sir? There is a law enforcement protection act that was signed into law by President uh, Bush, and uh, that gave uh, any officer in the United States the right to carry an overstatement. Yeah, that, that gives them the right to carry, but it doesn't absolve okay. them from if I school may, policies. I've got uh, the again, policy okay. here. Okay. Um, well, no. Nova's, NOVA's policy is the only exception applies to duly sworn Commonwealth of Virginia police officers. While civilian, let's see, while civilian attired police officers have the authority to carry firearms, they must do so by keeping them concealed so as not to alarm others. That's so, a verbatim quote from the college policy. So in this particular instance, like a law enforcement officer from another state, retired law enforcement officer not sworn in Virginia, would still not be able to carry on campus, which I have right. a problem with, especially if they've done you know, 10, 15, 20 years and want to come back for 
continuation credits and you're going to tell him that he can't carry a gun and that's his whole life. Mm -hmm. I would check to do that. Thank you. I have a concern about what you talked about. Are we going to make our professors now healthcare professionals? Are we going to provide them with the training to recognize the symbols? Are they going to be policing the students' papers? Are the, pa pa are the students then going to write free will? Where do you put a stop? Where do you protect the population? And where do you step over the line? I don't, you know, I don't know what the question is, but you're asking a lot of our professors. You know, we haven't asked anything of the professors at this point, but I appreciate the point. Mm -hmm. Other comments at this time? Yes, ma'am, in the back. That's a good question. No. I think my biggest concern is communication. I really like what you said about the lighting. If there was some way for the lights to flash, you want to have lockdown or people stay in the building. I've just gone out into the lobby and screamed up and down the hall, stay in the building, tornado warnings, and you know, tried to scream out in the parking lot. So if there was some kind of flashing system of LCD panels would be wonderful. Um, I prefer that my students don't have their cell phones on when I'm trying to lecture. And I don't have mine on and I don't have text messages. So um, that's good in some instances, and maybe somebody out in the hall would come tell us, but the lights I think would be great. And if there were a hotline for the whole VCCS, if a professor or a student had a problem that they could call, because I called around on campus and called four or five offices and couldn't get anybody, either it was two minutes after five, or you know, maybe the person's on the a telephone, or the person's go to the bathroom, and if we just had one central number, a call that was manned, you know, at least when the campus was open, that that person would know which uh, department head was on. As I was saying before, at night, there's not many administrators here, the deans aren't here unless they're teaching or whatever. So uh, it would be great if we had one central number to call without having to call the police or if we could get the hold of the police or somebody, you know, whatever. And somebody, some kind of a telephone tag around campus that could warn other other uh, uh, buildings because you don't know and our campus is not that large but it's pretty large you don't know what's going on in another building so if there was some kind of um, centralized number that you could call for questions or with a problem or if you, even if you have a problem with uh, a student uh, I had a student, suicidal student and couldn't get anybody when I needed them to find out what to do you know there was no chain of command My dear beloved boss, Alison Baker, asked me to speak <laughs> to this. Um, there are a couple of things in place. Each campus, and I'm now addressing only Nova and Nancy Wyatt, the business manager of the Manassas campus. Each campus has its own plans, but every campus has the emergency alert warning system, which has messages that go both outside and inside the buildings. <clears throat> We're working on getting that system upgraded or a replacement installed, but it, it is used right now. It is something we can use to announce shelters in place and continuing instructions if the shelter in place were long. Versus evacuation, which is simply a fire alarm complete with flashing lights and so forth. Uh, there also is an evening administrator at every campus, and that evening administrator is supposed to have a cell phone and or walkie-talkie and direct line to the police at every campus. I think they're on duty until 9, it might even be 10 o'clock depending on the size of the campus and the, whether we have classes like on Friday, it's less. But there are a number of measures uh, that we have. We, thanks to Dr. Sachs, we have um, the um, system and that we're setting up also so that people can call to find out what's going on at the campus before they ever get there. What do you call that? Oh, yeah, we have a, a highway alert radio system. You see them when you go to um, <coughs> Parks, airport parking, where you tune your AM radio and you can hear uh, messages about the campus. What's the frequency? Uh, 1630, but it isn't fully implemented. 1630 is just being implemented right now. Uh, At the Manassas campus, we also have uh, kiosks have which have flashing instructions about evacuation or shelter in place, and I know other campuses are considering doing the same thing. 
I think that the emergency plans are on the web for all uh, faculty and staff to look at, and then the business managers and police have much more detailed instructions, and that it's a good idea to check with them if you have confusion about that. May I just may I ask a couple of questions? Because you raised a couple of exciting points. Uh, the radio frequency, one of the challenges we have at Virginia Community College system is we have an almost 100% commuter campus. We don't have residence hall, rare exceptions next to military bases, a couple of unique programs. So the 1630 AM radio frequency, would that be available to all of the campuses in the NOVA environment? Yes, the, the, the purpose of it was the same as you find, for example, at uh, the Patriot Center at George Mason or at uh, the Convocation Center at James Madison. When you have a lot of visitors coming to the college, they don't really know where to go, what to do, uh, beginning with classes, young new students. The, the same thing, the let's it work for that makes it in an emergency available that you can put a recorded message on it. Now, obviously, if you're not carrying a radio, you can't tune into it. But you know, we uh, we work with a company to put that in, and it's all six of our campuses have the same frequency. Thank you. Questions from the panel? Thank you. Other comments? Yes, sir. Question. Law enforcement for the college, does that come out of college funding, or is that separate funding? I believe uh, it's all localized college funding. Okay, because I know I just read an article where the governor's cutting local law enforcement. Uh, and his next budget, he's looking at reducing funding for law enforcement. Uh, we've not been notified of any such cuts that affect the Virginia College system. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, one of the experiences that I've had with the Woodbridge campus is that at night when you want to call campus police you can't find them you can't find the phone number you gotta go like if you're in the testing lab you gotta go all the way downstairs to where their office is in order to get a hold of them they need to be signed on every floor by each of the elevators you know at least some central point on both ends of the hallway where you got a phone number you don't have to go anywhere you can get a hold of them immediately may i respond to that we also have little wallet-sized cards for both faculty and students uh, that have the numbers of the police. You can carry it in your NOVA ID card holder or in your wallet. They have all those numbers and they have the instructions for both shelter in place and evacuation. The police obviously have to handle police issues, so if they're working an accident, they will not be able to necessarily answer in a nanosecond. But that number will uh, get to your police and it will also give them a message so they can get right back to you. Well, again, you have to understand, not everybody is taking classes at the campus. They're going there for research and they're going there for the testing lab. A lot of my stuff I take online, I get in, I get what I need to get done, I get out. I don't have one of these. I don't even have a student ID. I swore I wasn't going to talk in this meeting. <laughs> um, there, I don't know how other campuses do it, but Mr. Tittman can tell us for what well, we do. At Annandale, we just put them everywhere. We distribute them to the students when, it, when we start registration. We put them in the counseling centers. We stack them at the parking, the business office, admissions, registration labs. We have green ones for students, yellow ones for staff. Can we do a copy of one yes. card? But we don't, we don't look at these, as I'm sure you're realizing, we don't look at the cards as the only answer. I'm sure you've found by now, as we have, that we have to layer our responses. The emails don't do it for everybody. Text messaging doesn't do it for everyone. Cards doesn't do it for everyone. Highway alert systems don't do it. All these various systems, we have to, lights, Annunciator systems, we have to implement them all yeah. in order to try to reach as many people as we can. We find that we're spending a lot of time working on communications as far as our emergency responses. Thank you. Dr. Shepard, how many students total across all the Virginia Community College systems? This, this year we'll have about 65,000 students. Are we beating Miami Dade this year? Miami Dade is now a four year. Oh, okay. So they're out of our league now. <laughs> 65,000 students on five campuses plus online. Six, That's a six, six campus, sorry. And two, two centers. And two centers. That's not a, that's not a small communications test. I'm excited to learn some of the things. Thank you. 
Other comments at this time? Now, in between all of the comments, I want to point out there's some juice and some water in the back. Right down this hallway here, you're on the stairs, you're up the stairs, up the village, it's up the stairs, there's a restaurant in the room, but minus the juice and water, a little too much. Is it this way? I forget about it. My view is the restaurant. It's always white. All right. This way. All right, sorry about that. Directionally challenged. Other comments at this time? Yes, sir. I'd like to uh, make a comment about uh, the whole uh, lockdown and shelter in place. Uh, about lockdowns and shelter in place. Um, being somewhat of a security minded sort myself, um, I'm generally aware of my surroundings. And uh, for example, I'm taking a class at, uh, at Loudoun, which is in a high school. And their rooms have very securely locking doors and sitter block walls. Um, Annandale, on the other hand, or sorry, Alexandria, on the other hand, I haven't kept a close eye on Annandale since the last course I took there was, took here was like last spring. But um, after the tech shooting, I became a little more aware of the subject. And uh, Annandale, or sorry, Alexandria has drywall on their classroom walls. Um, now, as far as sheltering in place goes, I would refer you to a website called The Box of Truth, theboxotruth.com. T H E B O X O T R U T H dot com. I thought that's what you said. Yep. And um, it is enlightening. It is why I do not have any rifles set up as home defense guns at home because I live in a townhouse. Um, my own defense gun is a shotgun because that will have a little bit less over penetration. Um, essentially, one layer of drywall is transparent. It's, it is concealment, not cover. So regarding uh, the lockdown? Regarding a lockdown, um, if you've got someone, if you've got uh, a whack job like Mr. Joe, uh, decides that, uh, oh, the door is locked, they can't get into it, um, all he has to do is start shooting through the wall at about knee level. Knee level. Right. If there's concrete on the other side, it'll bounce, but so that's after it's gone across the classroom. Are you advocating lockdown in the case of cinder block and hardwood doors, and not lockdown in the case of? Actually, what I'm what I'm advocating is taking out the shooter, but, uh, no, I but my point my point <laughs> being that that in some cases a lockdown is futile. choose out of Nova when they go on to other colleges. You've got, you know, uh, you've got businessmen, business owners, regular folks, lawyers, doctors. Heck, you get a student a few years down the road, you may be in his office letting him inject things in your body, but you don't want to let him carry a gun. I find that interesting. Thank you. Going three times. Yes, sir. Thank you. Regarding the uh, out-of-state law enforcement carry, it's House Bill 218, which allows that. 
Yeah. Yeah. I believe the implementation date was uh, September of 2005. House Bill 218. House Bill 218. That's, that's all well and wonderful to make things legal, but you still well, risk Let me make sure I understand the comment. You're saying that House Bill 218 just allows out of state carry? That's correct. Okay. Right. For law enforcement, which is all fine, it's called the Law Enforcement Protection Act. Yeah. So right. that you but that makes it that makes it legal. It doesn't override the policy that the will expel policy. you. Right. Which which why yeah, is asking if there's yeah. any exception for yeah. law enforcement of other states yeah. because the uh, school policy only. But was this policy written before that uh, before that law was passed? I'm not certain of the uh, the origin of the current policies. Uh, in Virginia, the state law, there's no law against open carry. So a law-abiding citizen can open carry. You need a concealed carry permit only if you're going to conceal it. What prevents students from carrying at the campuses, some, some of the community campuses, not all of them, is the student handbook. It's not state law. If I go to a Nova school and I'm doing, doing an open carry, and somebody reports me, and I get uh, basically expelled for doing an open carry, I can come back the next day and do research, and there's not really anything they could do about it because I could use the library as a public, you know, uh, just a public library, and it's perfectly legal because I'm no longer a student. Then the school doesn't uh, have any power over me at that point. Thank you. Well, not, not an easy issue, but a very complex issue. Other questions or comments at this time regarding campus safety or bridge preparedness? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Frances Villagrain Glover. I am the evening administrator at Alexander Campus, and I'm a backup. My campus is safe right now. Um, we talked about concealed guns, how to train our faculty, how to train um, our security personnel. Uh, I'd like to the committee consider how to educate our students on protecting themselves. I know in K through 12, you go simplistic as protecting each other from being bullied. Uh, we need to perhaps look into more strategies as how to educate our students if you feel threatened in the class. Uh, I know in other instances, in other community colleges I worked for, we had students in our class who were too scared to say anything. So maybe a proactive approach about uh, protecting each other in the classroom and on campus. That, uh, the last comment reminded me of something. That is, uh, at the Alexandria campus, we've tried to uh, give student orientations. We've been very unsuccessful because students are not required to attend it. It was a voluntary effort we were putting on. But uh, if students were required or if the panel would consider uh, perhaps uh, uh, making it mandatory that they would attend, or if this means even giving them uh, some kind of credit for attending a safety briefing uh, put on by the police, I think that would be very helpful. But like I said, we've tried in Alexandria, but uh, we've been unsuccessful, we'll put together a uh, presentation, but uh, you know, again, a uh, very important participation. On behalf of the report, we just made it mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to report that I've trained several NOVA instructors and adjunct professors so they can get their concealed carry permits. Anybody else happy to report anything else this time? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Um, something, one comment has been kind of boiling around in my mind for the last few minutes. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You talked about uh, that there would be you have the cards for calling the police and such. But then you made a comment along the lines of that they might be working a traffic accident. So if you need the police, leave a message. And I'm just kind of curious as to how this should work. <laughs> What I was saying is if they're in the middle of a police action, they may not be able to answer the call at the nanosecond when it rang. 
but they will get back to you as fast as they can, which usually is within a minute or so. I didn't mean that it was going to be a long time, but they can't actually stop handcuffing somebody or something like that or preventing a, um, an assault or something to answer a phone every time. Especially when you consider that a lot of the calls they get are for directions and things that have nothing to do with police work. But they will respond. We have very good uh, police officers at our campuses, and I'm proud of them. And here's Lieutenant from Alexander. Thank you, Dr. Um, again, uh, calls are kind of prioritized with us, uh, as was said. But also, we uh, work very closely with our local jurisdictions. And that is, if there is something of a uh, high priority, we're tied up on something, uh, we will provide that number or uh, make arrangements for the local jurisdiction to come out to the campus. So again, uh, that is one of the contingencies that we work with. And all of the uh, campuses uh, uh, have a very good relationship with their local police. Yes, You just said something about how you would give someone a number. We, do you have the capability to transfer a call to the local police department? We can, uh, we can call them uh, over the police radios, things like that. Uh, we do have a police radio with their uh, local frequencies on it. Yes. And again, uh, that depends on the nature of the offense or the, uh, or the event. If it is something, uh, you know, uh, that the police uh, deems uh, you know, uh, low or high priority, they'll make a decision as to whether or not they do it, and they let the person know what we're doing. Because when I'm going to front with campus police, I don't want them telling me, <laughs> oh, here's the phone number. You know, I got somebody that's walking up behind me, I'm in a deserted parking lot, I don't want to get told that I got to write down a phone number. Okay. I want the call transferred. Okay. I want somebody out there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, behoove the instructors. Ask a couple of questions if I may. Joan here, I'm sorry for the... Alexandria. Did I hear you correctly say that your radios have your first responder frequencies on them? They share some sort of a communication with your local police force? That is correct. Is that universal throughout the northern system? Does anybody know? Yes. Yeah. Um, one suggestion I'd like to make based on the, uh, the reference to phone numbers, if every instructor would put it on their syllabus, for the local law enforcement and for the campus police and any other emergency numbers, it wouldn't take up a whole lot of space. I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to comment on this good idea. That's a suggestion I have heard. That's a good one because you keep track of your syllabus. That's one in a row. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Neil, uh, Chief Coletta can tell you uh, that while we have the uh, radios that communicate with our local uh, first responders, that those radios evidently go out of style in 2008, uh, nine, and, uh, and so uh, one of the budgetary issues that is confronting our uh, police force is the replacement of all of those radios, um, which we estimate to be in the $200,000 range. Is there any money from the federal government, um, not just for the police departments, but for the schools as first responders? Any money for communication systems? Have those areas been looked at? I know there are, there are different pots of money. I am not familiar with Also, some money is in the home, uh, homeland security areas, you know, various federal agencies. The BCCS is an organization that does look through various, we have a, a book that comes out that lists different agencies and different programs that we're eligible for. And so we do have colleagues that are made aware of that and do every year submit different applications for various areas. Yes, sir, right here. Um, Chief Coletta, you mentioned with regard to the whole um, call the police because you need an escort and if they're working an accident on the other side of campus, they may not be able to answer the, um, 
uh, at that nanosecond, that's understandable. Um, my earlier somewhat snarky comment about when seconds count, they're minutes away, was because you cannot have a police officer every 50 yards around the campus. It's, it's not possible and it's not feasible. Um, I would point out that on the subject of tying them up, uh, Mr. Cho managed to get all of the Virginia Tech police concentrated in one area by shooting a couple of people, then vanishing, and then going on to his main event. Um, he may have been a rather sick SOB, but uh, he had a certain amount of cunning in the way of, of coming up with diversions and tactics and whatnot. And that's, again, that's why I would rather be able to take care of myself. Thank you. Anyway, I've beaten that drum enough. <laughs> Yes, from the back. Uh, yes, as an instructor, again, I, I put post beat Virginia Tech, I put in first responders, let make yourself your presence known to me. And generally, at, if I'm teaching night classes, which is what I predominantly do, um, I'll, I'll make available gentlemen volunteers, generally speaking, not, not being sexist or gender oriented, but have them available as escorts for any, uh, any anyone generally females, who are concerned about getting to parking, plot, uh, parking lots. And that's just, again, internal to uh, all the instructors. Um, you know, some best practices is really what it comes down to, and that might be put out for uh, instructors as well. I don't need the microphone, but I've got a loud voice. What you I don't need the microphone. <laughs> I, have a loud voice. Um, I, I think that Nova has a policy where they encourage students to double up and to walk to their cars as groups. They don't encourage people to go in ones and twos if possible. Um, that needs to be promoted as well. Um, it's a suggestion. Some instructors do make that buddy system. Criminals look for soft targets, and just like a lion out in the uh, Sahara, lions will take the loaned gazelle before they will run after the herd. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, just an uh, observation. When I was going to Woodbridge, one of the things I noticed, of course, is the people that get there later get the parking spots that are farther out. When their class is over later at night, they have to walk all the way out with their cars through that empty lot. I don't know, you know, just just an observation. I wouldn't know what to do about that other than to, you know, afford those individuals uh, the ability to defend themselves. Or, you know, in addition to doing the group thing, having them with the phone, armed with the phone numbers as well as anything else they may be armed with, uh, just along those lines. We first an interesting suggestion for the, of course, the armed the arm circumstance. We also heard, uh, if I could just recap it, the panel. We also had some concerns over various areas with the lighting and making sure that the areas were well lit and those types of things and security presence. So there are some good points in terms of the folks walking across the campus. Yes, sir? Now, what would you think about non lethal like a pepper spray, for example? I, mean, I don't know what I mean. I don't want to use them at all. <laughs> I didn't know if that was, uh, you know, against college policy or not, but I mean, it's that's a, good, that's a good question. I don't know the college policy on a non-lethal. Well, it says, it says or dangerous weapons, which is why I'm not carrying my pepper spray. I wouldn't want to cause a fit of the vapors, pardon the pun. Is that something that could be 
generalized and set for all the campuses as a whole. To address? Uh, just differences in campuses, just so like there's one standard policy which is taken if a policy is broken. Uh, the, uh, um, we have a single student handbook. The student handbook's on the website. Uh, it describes disciplinary policies. Any student who's accused of anything has a right to uh, a hearing and uh, opportunity to explain and, uh, and certain procedures and safeguards. Uh, but I recommend you read it because I'm just the vice president for finance and I don't know very much about student stuff. But you weren't just referring to just Northern, you were talking about BCCSY? Yeah, yeah, BCCSY. So there are some, I think each campus does have a student handbook and policies. They still, and I'm sure there are a lot of overlaps to the extent I'm not sure they're all uniform. I'm thinking the major areas that are guided by the Board of Visitors policy and statewide policy for the community college system. So there is that body of those major policy issues. Other comments, questions, thoughts, things you'd like to share at this time? I've still got energy, guys. I can still write. I have three more papers. She's got it right there. I'm sitting She can't tear it out pretty evenly. It's the best she can do. I can still write on the parts that I have with me, so it's working out. Yes, ma'am. I guess I would just mention for those of you who don't know that at the college, we also have what we call blue light call boxes that are in those parking lots. Thank you very much. They're in the parking lots, and someone can hit the button. The call immediately goes to the police, even if you cannot talk. The police know where your location is based on that call box. We also have emergency hall phones, which work in the same way. You can press the button in the middle of the hallway and someone's accosting you and you can't talk. The police still know where you are. We have a third thing uh, which needs to be renewed. We were first with it and now it's so outdated that we've got to start over. But they were panic buttons, just like a bank teller has that were put in the locations where people work late at night or in offices which get a lot of grief like parking and business offices. And that also went to the police and there are options in some cases to talk or not to talk. The phones themselves can be speed dialed to the police. You can do that yourself or at our campus we're trying to do it campus wide and just have it automatically set up that way. So that as Rick Tittman said, the business manager from Annandale, we're taking a massive approach on every front we can think of to cover all the bases, knowing that we will never be able to cover all the bases. Yes, sir. Um, about those blue light call boxes, I was when I was a student here, I only saw one box, and that's because it was blinking one time out in the parking lot. They're not very noticeable. Um, well, I'm not more noticeable in the night when the blue light shows better. Think of Kmart, but yeah. these are all being upgraded and But if I'm if I'm a student and I'm having some kind of issue where I need immediate assistance, I don't want to go looking around. Where's the call box? I don't have any clue where they're at. Your comment is the call box is going to be very obvious. Let's make them blaze orange. <laughs> Regarding the campus speed dials, I will tell the speed dials to please, so I, my job is not to regale you with humorous incidents. Occasionally, if you have that program in your phone, the police can show up because you've actually hit that. Um, I don't know that from experience or anything. <laughs> Be careful with the speed dials. Other comments? Thank you for the comment on the call box. That didn't happen to me, by the way. It happened to our chance. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't remind you. comments this time? Uh, well, I have one last comment, and that is that um, it's pretty standard. Everybody knows when classes get out. Unless the professor is letting the class out ahead of schedule, it's, it's pretty standardized that this class will get out at 10.30 at night, this class will get out at 7.30 at night. There might be a, it might be a good idea to, to have more police presence or more faculty presence outside of their buildings during the times when transit is uh, is occurring. Um, hall, you know, the teachers, I'm not trying to, to put 
some kind of extra duty on the teachers or the professors, but you know, when the class is out, they generally hang around in their class. Um, you see a whole lot of students in the in the buildings, and you see a whole lot of students going to and from their vehicles. But in in my time here, I I never saw any faculty, for the most part, on the campus during the high transit times. I did see the police every now and then, but it might not be a bad idea to encourage the staff to be out and about during those high transit times. Just to say, to add on to that, because you're talking about night school, um, since you add on to that, since you're talking about night school, you've got a, a lot of uh, older folks, you've got an older crowd there. There's nothing that says you couldn't use the, some of the students for the same purpose. Have a mini training program for some of them and have them, you know, just be student observers, whatever you want to title it, uh, where they can just get on the horn a little quicker. Because, um, of course, the police can't be everywhere, which is one of the reasons I advocate concealed carry. Uh, but by having these student observers, at least you would have more eyes for the campus police. not my intent to offend them or to make them worry or to foster any concern in their mind. Therefore, this environment. In this environment, I have no problem with concealed carry. I mean, again, I prefer open carry. I prefer that you be able to do, you know, fully what the Second Amendment says, but I understand that there are concerns. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, with regard to the open carry, hoplophobia is treatable. What? Hoplophobia is treatable. Is hoplophobia the fear of the guns? Fear of weapons. How do you explain fear? Uh, concealed weapons or open weapons? Uh, weapons. Generally, general generally paranoia general about weapons, weapons in general, yeah. And what's it called? Hoplophobia. Can't Same root as Greek hoplite. It's a Freudian term. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm getting a little more interested in the uh, There was a gentleman who was very much in the firearms, Jeff Cooper, I believe, who coined that phrase. And it's very well known in the shooting community, but outside of that, I don't think you're—I don't think you're going to find it in your textbooks. <laughs> <laughs> to to piggyback on his comment, you know, a campus slash guardian angels, campus angel, some type of mm -hmm. program for evening classes, particularly, uh, might be something that either student mm -hmm. association, student body could get involved in, and and go for it. I'd even throw in a couple extra points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Other comments across this time. This has been wonderful. Let me let you get out of here in the next little bit without saying a hearty thank you. Because this has been entertaining at times, but more substantive than not. And I really appreciate the comments I know the panel has as well, Ms. Waters. We're not over yet. We still got 12 minutes to go, but I want to make sure not to forget to say thank you. So we all of our early days. Other comments at this time. You got your escorts for the evening. You're preparing. Oh, <laughs> um, I do want to mention, this is just for Nova, we have a new uh, director of emergency planning, Will Flagler. If Will Flagler would stand up. Will is going to try and unify all of our emergency plans. He reports to Vice President Baker. He has a lot of actual experience, and one of the things I'm really looking forward to that he wants to do is actual scenario training. Not just fire drills and shelter-in-place drills, but scenario training. So the business manager's police, and he will be working very closely together to try to get some of those things underway, and I think that will be a meaningful step. Thank you. Well, well I'll, I'll plug the adjunct uh, uh, angle again. Um, seeing that most VCs has campuses, if they're going the way that most, most four-year colleges are, um, we're 50 percent or 55 percent, so the message needs to get out to, and, and predominantly we're the night staff as well. So that, and, and I'm sure that's at all the campuses. So that needs to be addressed to the adjunct community. 
um, training um, scenarios as well as uh, open communication. Um, and again, many of us are working normal jobs during the day and then we're, we're here at night. Uh, again, frequently there's some weakness in communication, but if, you're, if your overall faculty staff is, is staffed by adjuncts 50-55%, that needs to be looked at statewide. I'll have it all available on Google Video if you want to watch it later. Google YouTube. Uh, it's too, this YouTube limits videos to 10 minutes. Google does Break not. <laughs> I I would rather not. That's that's a lot of work. YouTube on my phone. What are you going to put as the search phrase? Search for? Um, VCCS Safety Forum. Sure. <laughs> I will um, if this. As your, I, I will, uh, I'll email the link to, to this address. Great, appreciate it. Uh, I asked you to go on YouTube because that's what my kids will do. I'm going to have to go to the right. All right, yes, sir. Doesn't the college have a TV station? I believe Northern is a lower college that does operate a television station. Well, like when you hold this at the places that have it, either recorded or broadcast or both, for Are a wider sorry? audience. That takes a tremendous amount of coordination. But I'll tell you what we have done. Uh, we have our system public information officer here. I want to introduce Jeff Krause who is the sign. Uh, Jeff has uh, made this press release available statewide, and we've opened up this uh, email, email menu statewide, and the comments are pouring in. Some tremendous comments. And some of the folks who haven't attended the campus, uh, haven't been on the campus in 30 years. So it's amazing uh, the reach of the public information officer, and Jeff, and thank you publicly. Comment. It's a little difficult to coordinate with the time frames we have, but uh, as time goes forward and that becomes easier, you can expect uh, these, these kinds of meetings to get to larger and more public in that way. Considering I found out about it this afternoon, I had to go home to Stafford and get cleaned up and back up here. It's, I understand <laughs> the coordination as well. <laughs> well. Thank you. I'm glad you made it. Other comments at this time and thoughts? We have about uh, eight minutes left in our scheduled time. Anybody who's been shy and hasn't spoken would like to speak at this point. Uh, let me remind you that you've got comment cards. There are things that you, you wanted to say and just don't feel like you're not the public speaker and don't want to say it in this forum. Uh, you drop them in. You don't have to put your name. If you want any kind of response back, it gives you an email address. The response will be immediate. Uh, there's also, a, if something occurs to you later, we do have an email address set up by voice at bccs.edu that we will be monitoring. If you write to this immediately, an automated response because uh, we want to make sure that you know that we received it and we got it recorded. But uh, we will be looking at these and the task force will be reviewing every response that comes to this email address. So we're happy to take your comments in any way, whether in this form or later as an afterthought or in writing uh, in this. Manner. So, other thoughts at this point for this one? Seeing none at this point, let me say thank you. Folks, you've been absolutely fantastic. I really do appreciate you coming out. I know it takes a little extra effort. It's not part of your normal routine day. Uh, on behalf of the task force, we're very grateful for your input. A lot of great ideas, a lot of concerns you can take to heart. We're very thankful for your participation. So thank you.